Okay, uh, so welcome to this uh, next video in the playlist on the cardiovascular system. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the heme group and also uh, hemoglobin. Uh, so, uh, the um, structure for this video is we're firstly going to look at the structure of the heme group. Then what we're going to do is we're going to see how uh, it is used as a prosthetic group on the side of proteins. So we're going to see what that means and how it's achieved. Then we're going to see uh, the example, the ultimate example of a protein with heme as a prosthetic group, which is hemoglobin. And we'll have a look at how oxygen binds to hemoglobin. Right, so firstly, let me just clear up uh, the name, basically, because um, depending on whether you are using American English or British English, uh, heme is spelt differently, basically. So in the American English style, heme is written H-E-M-E, -E, so this is American uh, English, okay? Whereas in British English, uh, heme is written... Um, H A E M. So that's how we say heme in uh, British uh, English. Uh, now, I have entitled this video Heme Spelt in the American Way, merely because uh, my main audience is American. So I, <laughs> I want to. I used that one rather than the English one, even though I myself am English. So I have always been taught to use this one here. Um, Similarly, therefore, there is uh, two ways of spelling hemoglobin. The American way, which is hemoglobin, like so. And then uh, the English way, or the British way, which is hemoglobin. So they are exactly the same thing. Uh, they're just spelt differently. So this is the American way. This is the British English way. Okay, right. So hemoglobin, hemoglobin, heme, heme, whichever way you want to spell it. They're referring to the same thing. Right, so now that I've got that off my chest, um, let's begin by looking at the heme group. So we're going to look at the heme slash, and I'll put both of them, heme slash heme group. Okay, right. So um, this basically is a large ring structure known as a porphyrin ring with uh, an, uh, an iron atom um, coordinated at the centre, basically. So let me show this. So you start off to draw these structures, and I'm not going to draw it atom by atom. Instead, I'm going to draw it uh, skeletal structure. So where you uh, don't, where you have a corner with no uh, letter, that just means carbon, basically. And I won't show hydrogens coming off, basically. So let's start then. Okay, so you have four of these pentagon rings, like so. Okay, so here's one pentagon ring. It's a bit of an odd-shaped pentagon. But basically, this is a five-membered ring, and where you, and where I haven't drawn carbons, those are where carbons would be, okay? So here is another one here, and I'll try and make it look a bit more like a pentagon this time. So here we go. There, it's a bit more obvious now that these are corners, whereas here it was a little less obvious that those are corners. So really what I mean by a corner here is carbon, carbon, carbon. There are four carbons making up the rest of these rings. And then uh, I only show the atoms, basically, that aren't carbon or hydrogen. I don't show hydrogens at all. I don't even give them a corner. I just don't show them. So wherever there's a missing bond, basically, you just fill that in with um, uh, hydrogen. Okay. Uh, well, you fill it in with a hydrogen if it's off a carbon. If it's not off a carbon, then you don't fill it in with hydrogen. So all of these corners that are um, are implicitly carbons, if they have missing bonds, then it's assumed that you understand that those other bonds are just hydrogen atoms bonded to them covalently. Okay, so you have these um, four um, rings, basically, containing a single nitrogen atom and then four carbon atoms. They are all five-membered rings. And now they're all connected together. So there's a carbon connecting each of them together. So here we go. Here's a carbon linking these two carbons here. Here is a carbon, whoops, linking these two here. Um, here is a carbon linking these two here. Okay. And here is a carbon linking these two rings here. And they're a bit long bonds, but that's just the way it's turned out in my picture. Okay, right. Now what we need to do is uh, put in 
put in the um, put in the double bonds. Basically, there are lots of double bonds. So this bond here is a double bond, and similarly, this bond here is a double bond. So that's nicely sort of symmetric on both sides. Similarly, this bond here is a double bond, and this bond here is a double bond. So again, that's nicely symmetric on both sides. Now, the rings, unfortunately, aren't symmetric with the double bonds. So this ring up here is going to have double bonds there and there. Uh, this ring over here is going to have a double bond here and a double bond here. Okay. This ring down here is just going to have one double bond down there. And then finally, this ring down here is going to have a double bond here and a double bond there. Right. Now, that's nearly finished now. Just to finish it off, uh, there are... a but in fact, when we talk about the heme slash heme group, um, we're not just talking about one chemical structure. There are many different heme groups. And now I'm going to show you where the variation is. Because actually, you can link whatever groups you want off a certain number of positions. So here is our first variable position. R1 position up here. You can link whatever group you want off that R1. Okay? And then off here you have a methyl group. Now, I said I wasn't going to draw carbons, but it looks a bit, it looks less intimidating to just stick a methyl group there than just have a line coming off. Um, so, I will just draw these methyl groups. They're not, it's not too much effort to draw those, okay? Uh, but if you wish, you could just stick a line there if you're sticking strictly to the skeletal structure. Okay? Now, off this second uh, ring over here, you have the R2 group. So, this is known as the second ring here. This is the first ring. And this, that this therefore, is the first R group, and this is the second R group. And then off this here, you then have another methyl group. Okay? So, again, R2 can be loads of different groups, leading to a huge amount of variability. You can have anything in R1, anything in R2. It's unset, basically. So there is not just one heme group, because there's all this variability, basically, uh, for what you have as your R1 and R2. And it goes on, basically. There is a methyl group off here, but off this carbon of the ring here, again, you have an R group, basically. You, it's not set what you put there. So that's the third R group. And then off this fourth ring, you then have the fourth R group. And again, off here, you have a methyl group like so. So that structure that we've now drawn there, this is not heme yet. This is a porphyrin ring, so porphyrin ring. Okay, it's the basis for heme, but it's not quite there yet. To make it heme, we have to stick the iron in. We haven't had iron yet. But what we're going to do is stick in an iron ion. So this is an iron for the element, and then ion. In fact, maybe I should say iron cation, because it's going to be positively charged. Then I won't have to say iron ion. Uh, iron cation. So here's our iron cation right at the centre, and it's a 2 plus cation. So, um, iron can exist in lots of different cationic states. It can exist uh, commonly in this 2 plus state, which is known as the ferrous cation, or the ferrous ion. So this is the ferrous cation. And it, again, you will see people denote this differently. Some people, rather than putting the 2 plus there, instead put, insist on putting Roman numerals up there. In addition, some people will write phi and then brackets too. Um, okay, the reason that they do that is quite complicated chemistry. Uh, it has to do with this being the oxidation state as well as just the charge. Uh, but um, as far as we're concerned, we'll just use this notation here with the uh, 2 plus charge. There is another ion, or ion cation, which is where it's in the 3 plus state, and this is known as the ferric cation. Now, hemoglobin, uh, sorry, heme groups specifically have this ferrous cation at the center. They do not have the ferric cation at the center. So again, the ferric cation, it can be denoted F3 like so, or Fe3 like that. Right, but heme groups specifically have this ferrous cation, this iron 2 plus cation at their center. Now, how is it going to be bonded, basically? Well, two of these nitrogens, you might notice, don't have enough bonds. So they actually form covalent bonds with the iron. 
i.e. the nitrogen donates one bond and the iron ion, cation here, donates another electron. So they share electrons, basically. So these are actually two normal covalent bonds between the iron atom and these nitrogen atoms here. Okay. Now, these bonds between these nitrogens and these other two rings, which have already got three bonds and are therefore perfectly happy as they are, uh, those are not covalent bonds. Instead, what happens is these nitrogen atoms, they have lone pairs of electrons. So each of them has a single lone pair of electrons, uh, because nitrogen has uh, five electrons in its outer electron shell, basically. Now, uh, two of those are in this lone pair together. The other three are then involved in covalent bonds, okay? So these two are these uh, final two that are in this lone pair together. And those are just going to be attracted, basically, to the positive charge on this iron uh, cation at the center here. So they just sort of um, interact electrostatically with uh, the ion um, cation. So those we will denote with this sort of uh, dashed line, like so. Okay, and this now is a heme group. Okay, so um, the porphyrin ring with this iron cation coordinated, this is said to be coordinated now in between these four different groups. Um, it's known as a four coordinate ring because you've got four bonds basically at the moment. Four coordinate ring. And what we'll see is that you can actually have more coordinates of um, iron because you can have bonds coming up from above and also from below. So you can extend, you can have iron cations with six coordinates around them, basically. And that's indeed how this is going to bond, bind firstly to the protein. One of those bonds, one of those extra bonds is going to be to the protein. And then the final one, the sixth one, will be to oxygen or nitric oxide or carbon monoxide or other um, other small molecules like that. Okay, so the heme group itself is an extremely planar structure. All four of these bonds are in a single plane. So it is like we've drawn it, and there are two available bonds to interact with this iron cation. One from above and one from below, and we'll see how that's important in the next video.